welcome to Prapun Gorkar Educational Channel. Today, in this online lecture, we will discuss on very important topic, vaccines. And the points I have considered for this lecture are 1. Introduction 2. List of vaccine preventable diseases 3. Classification of vaccines 4. Brief information of clinical trials 5. Roots of vaccine administration 6. Side effects and safety matters 7. List of common vaccines 8. Cold chain importance 9. Current status of COVID-19 vaccines 10. Vaccination for travelers 11. Syllabus topics and 12. Vibhavise questions Introduction A vaccine is a biological preparation which provides active acquired immunity to a specific disease. A vaccine contains components that resemble a disease causing microorganism and is often made from weak or killed form of the microbes, its toxins or one of its surface proteins. The agent stimulates the immune system of the body to recognize the agent as a threat and then immune system mechanism destroy it. The agent in the vaccine helps defense mechanisms of the body to further recognize and destroy any of the microorganisms associated with it and also to encounter them in future. Vaccines can be prophylactic or therapeutic. The administration of vaccines is called vaccination. Prophylactic vaccines create artificial specific immunity to prevent a specific disease while therapeutic vaccines are administered after the individual is already affected by a disease or infection. This is the list of various diseases which can be preventable by prophylactic vaccines. Cholera, Bacteria, Hepatitis B, Influenza, Japanese Encephalitis, Measles, Meningitis, Mumps, Pertussis, that means whooping cough, Pneumonia, Polio, Rabies, Ruka virus disease, Rubella, Titanus, Typhoid, Varicella, yellow fever and cervical cancer. Therapeutic vaccines may be useful to treat specific cancers. Now about the classification of vaccines. Vaccines can be classified as follows. 1. Live attenuated vaccines 2. Inactivated vaccines 3. Subunit vaccines 4. Toxoid vaccines 5. Conjugate vaccines 6. DNA vaccines and 7. Recombinant vector vaccines Well, let us discuss live attenuated vaccines An attenuated vaccine is created by reducing the virulence of a pathogen It is kept live Attenuation takes an infection organism and alters it so that it becomes harmless or less virulent. Viruses may be attenuated using the principle of evolution by serial passage of the virus through a foreign host. For example, tissue culture, agglomerated chicken egg or live animals. And live attenuated vaccine examples are vaccines for measles, mumps, rubella, rotavirus, smallpox, chickenpox, yellow fever, etc. Then inactivated vaccines. Inactivated vaccines use the killed version of the organism 
that causes a disease. Inactivated vaccines usually do not provide immunity that is as strong as live vaccines. Hence, patient may need several doses over time called as booster shots in order to get ongoing immunity against diseases. To produce this type of vaccines, or bacteria or viruses are filled or inactivated by a specific chemical treatment or at specific temperature. Inactivated vaccine examples are polio virus vaccine, atrocious vaccine, rabies vaccine and hepatitis A vaccine etc. Now we will discuss about DNA vaccines. DNA vaccination is a technique for protecting against microbial disease by injecting a person genetically engineered DNA which contains a specific viral gene. His immunological cells then generate a protective immunological response. One example is for genetically introduction of a specific gene related to spike protein of an infective virus like coronavirus into an attenuated plasmid a plasmid is taken from a bacteria like E. coli it is important to note here that a plasmid is a small often circular DNA molecule found in bacteria plasmids are separate from the bacterial chromosome and these replicate independently. This type of DNA vaccination involves the direct introduction of a plasmid containing the DNA sequence encoding the antigen against which an immune response is produced. This way, DNA vaccines are produced to create immunity against influenza virus, hepatitis B virus, rabies virus and mycoplasma etc. Now about recombinant vector vaccines. In recombinant vector vaccines, an attenuated virus is used as a vector. To this vector, by chemical reactions, a specific infective virus component is attached by covalent bonds in animal culture. For example, to an attenuated adenovirus, by protein of SARS virus is attached by animal cell culture method. After adequate growth of the modified virus by genetic engineering method, it is isolated, purified and after clinical trials used as vaccine. When this component is injected as vaccine, attenuated viruses adhere on specific cell receptors of host and inject SARS related genetic material into them and stimulate the immune system. For more information on gene cloning and genetic engineering techniques, refer to MLT books part 2, chapter 43 and page 1358 or biochemistry book chapter 25 and page 639. Now let us consider the generation wise development of vaccines. First generation vaccines are live attenuated vaccines and inactivated vaccines. Second generation vaccines are conjugate vaccines and third generation vaccines are DNA vaccines and recombinant vector vaccines. And now the million dollar question which technology is being used in preventing COVID-19. Virtually every vaccine technique is being employed in the wide-ranging effort to find a reliable vaccine that is effective in preventing COVID-19. However, third generation techniques were used by both Pfizer and Moderna companies in USA to introduce RNA vaccines by using DNA vaccine technique while AstraZeneca uses an adenovirus vector vaccine using recombinant vector vaccine technology. 
Serum Institute of India in collaboration with AstraZeneca is all set to introduce Covishield vaccine in India from 16th of January to 021. Another good news is Covaxin is India's first indigenous COVID-19 vaccine and it has been manufactured by Bharat Biotechnik and it is developed in collaboration with the Indian Council of Medical Research ICMR and National Institute of Virology. Covaxin is an inactivated virus derived from a strain of COVID-19 virus. One adjuvant is used, alhydroxyquin 2, to boost immune response and longer lasting immunity in the host. Covaxin is an inactivated virus derived from a strain of COVID-19 virus. One adjuvant is used, alhydroxyquin 2, to boost immune response and longer lasting immunity in the host. First, I will give you information on COVID-19 vaccination. Pfizer and Moderna COVID-19 vaccine component is messenger RNA, mRNA of COVID-19 virus. And dilute is 0.9% sodium chloride, that is normal saline, and vaccine must be mixed with dilute before administration and scheduling. Two dose series separated by 21 days for Pfizer vaccine and 28 days for Moderna vaccine. And administration is by intramuscular injection in the deltoid muscle. And efficacy that means the reliable report of the vaccine both Pfizer and Moderna report about 95% efficacy that means effectiveness from their trials. Then Oxford, AstraZeneca and Serum Institute vaccines contain adenovirus vector component and it is tested in two different doses regions, one of which showed 90% efficacy and other showed 62% Efficacy. Then about COVID-19 vaccination regime in India. There will be two doses of the vaccine which will be given at a 28 day interval. The effectiveness of the vaccine would begin only after 14 days of receiving the second dose. This table indicates rules of vaccine administration uh, and I have considered some common vaccines. One question is often asked whether there will be side effects of vaccination and the answer is yes. Common side effects of vaccines are pain, swelling or redness at injection site and mild fever, chills, tired feeling, headache muscle and joint aches. Storage stability of vaccines is very important. Moderna vaccine is stable for long term storage at minus 20 degrees centigrade and for short term storage at 4 degrees centigrade. In contrast, the Pfizer vaccine must be stored and transported at minus 80 degrees centigrade which requires specialized freezer. Covishield vaccine, however, of Serum Institute and Covaxin of Bharat Biotech can be stored long term at 0 to 4 degrees refrigeration temperature, that means that of a normal refrigerator, making it easier to distribute in India. And information of a cold chain. A cold chain is a temperature controlled supply chain of vaccines. An unbroken cold chain is very important for an uninterrupted series of storage and distribution activities of vaccines which maintain their good quality at required temperature range. 
The purpose of vaccine cold chain is to maintain product quality from the time of manufacture until the point of administration by making it sure that vaccines are stored and transported within WHO recommended temperature ranges. Now next question is how to find reliability of vaccines. Like all medicines, every vaccine must go through extensive and rigorous testing to ensure it is safe before it can be introduced in a country. An experimental vaccine is first tested in animals to evaluate its safety and potential to prevent disease. It is then tested in human clinical trials in three phases. In phase one, the vaccine is given to a small number of volunteers to assess its safety and immune response and to determine the right dose. In phase two, the vaccine is given to hundreds of volunteers who are closely monitored for any side effects along with body profile test results. In this phase, some volunteers receive the vaccine and others do not receive vaccine called as placebo group. The vaccine effects of both the groups are then compared to see effectiveness of the vaccine. In phase 3, the vaccine is given to thousands of volunteers again, some of whom receive the investigational vaccine and some of whom do not like placebo group. And it is just like in the phase 2 trials, data from both groups is carefully compared to see if the vaccine is safe and effective against the disease. Once the results of clinical trials are available, various steps are required like reuse of efficacy, safety and manufacturing for regulatory and public health policy approvals before a vaccine may be introduced in a national immunization program. And following the introduction of a vaccine again, close monitoring of course continues to detect any unexpected adverse side effects and further assess effectiveness in the routine use setting among large number of people. Now regarding vaccination for travelers, WHO emphasizes that all travelers, domestic and international, should be immunized up to date with routine vaccinations. Travelers should be advised to check that they have been fully vaccinated against following diseases COVID-19, tetanus, pertussis, that is whooping cough, measles, rubella, mumps, poliomyelitis and diphtheria before starting their travel. Now try to solve this table viva using questions. 1. Which are vaccine preventable diseases? 2. What are various types of vaccines? Means various classes of vaccines. 3. What are various routes of vaccine administration? Give examples. 4. What are the common side effects and safety matters related to vaccines? 5. Name common vaccines. 6. What is cold chain and importance of cold chain? 7. Current status of COVID-19 vaccines. And 8. Give information on vaccination for travelers. Well, I have considered all these points today on this online lecture on vaccines and these are your syllabus topics also. I hope you will find this video informative as we all witness historical day of vaccination against COVID-19 in our country today. Kindly subscribe and share this video with all your friends and next time I will bring you another important online lecture on a new topic. Till then, goodbye.